Rygar the Legendary Adventure shares the name of two games that were previously produced by Tecmo for the arcades and the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, but this Rygar actually has very little to do with those two previous games other than Rygar's primary weapon, uh, which is the disc armor, the yo-yo-like spiked shield that he uses to defeat enemies. There are also a few other references to the uh, older Rygar games, such as the huge setting sun that you'll see in the first level, as well as the grappling capabilities of the disc armor. Uh, but by and large, it really doesn't have much to do with the older games. This one has more of a Greek mythology theme, and Rygar doesn't really look all that much like the uh, 2D sprite that you see in the arcade or the Nintendo Entertainment System version of the game. The story begins with Princess Harmonia being captured by the Titans who represent the ancient gods, uh, who are also trying to bring back the evil spirit of a god named Cronus. Naturally, Rygar goes after the Titans to rescue Princess Harmonia, and the story will continue to unfold uh, via cutscenes as well as tablets and like sort of documents that Rygar finds hidden in each of the environments in the game. The problem with these cutscenes isn't that they look bad or anything, in fact they look great, you get to see all the really uh, excellent detail on the character models, but the problem is that the voice acting is just way too melodramatic and you'll see a bunch of misspellings in the subtitles such as like evil being spelled E-V-E-L and things like that and it's really sort of sloppy to see that. And then it invaded my land Egypt. Argus took my life and everything that I held precious. As the game goes on, these cutscenes, you just either laugh or cringe at the really bad voice acting. And, and near the end, it almost just gets completely ridiculous. So, But thankfully, you know, the game is actually fun, so it's worth waiting through sort of the poor storyline. The main focus of the game is Rygar's disc armor, and there's actually three different types of disc armor in the game, each of which has varying types of attributes. <laughs> the first disc armor that Rygar has is medium power, it's medium speed, and has medium range. But as you go through the game and get the other two disc armors, you'll find that one of them has really long range, is really powerful, but it's also really slow. Whereas the third one is really fast, but it's really weak and doesn't have much range. Tecmo has really done an excellent job kind of balancing these three, these three disc armors and you actually find yourself switching between them in different situations. So if you're surrounded by a group of enemies, you know, you may switch to the, the Hades disc armor which has the longer range. Whereas if you're just dealing with one really weak enemy, you might just use uh, the one disc armor that has no range but it's really fast. Additionally, each of these disc armors has a different creature that can be summoned. One of them is Cerebris. Uh, these creatures can do a lot of damage in one hit, so these creatures are really useful, again, if you're uh, trapped within a group of enemies or even during a boss fight if you need to take off health really, a big chunk of health really quickly. Lastly, you can strengthen the disc armors using experience points that Rygar gets in these purple orbs that are hidden in pillars or vases or other objects in the environment. Uh, there's also special mystical stones that you can get uh, that you can put into one of three slots on the disc armor, so you can give it sort of uh, additional bonuses such as a knockback attack or um, make Rygar's stomping move more powerful. What makes the disc armors especially fun to use is the fact that they have a whole bunch of different combinations that you can execute by pressing different buttons. And as you get a little more complicated with the button pressing, so do the moves that Rygar does with the disc armor. Um, there's really a whole lot of different things you can do. You can throw the disc armor, have it basically attached to an enemy and have Rygar twir twirl it around his head. Uh, you can do a tornado attack where the disc armor will have a little whirlwind appear above it and it will suck in all the enemies nearby. Uh, there's also another attack where you can have the disc armor basically spin in place and then run away from it and have it track back to you and hit any enemies that are in the way. So there's a lot of fun stuff you can do and it makes the battle and battling in the game really fun to do. But the biggest problem with that is the fact that there just aren't a whole lot of enemies in the game. There are basically only four or five different types of enemies in the game, and out of those, there's only maybe two or three that have slight variations, they're a little bit stronger, or a little bit quicker. And, you know, there really isn't a whole lot of fighting in the game, which is just really unfortunate because, you know, the fighting system is executed really well. The boss fights are still pretty spectacular, you know, you'll be fighting these huge mythical beasts, uh, but oftentimes you'll find yourself relying on most of Rygar's basic disc armor attacks instead of the more complicated maneuvers simply because it takes too much time to execute those and you'll leave Rygar open to attack uh, too often if you try and use them. But the biggest problem that Rygar the Legendary Adventure has is the camera. It has a fixed perspective somewhat similar to Devil May Cry where it'll change uh, you know, depending on what room you're in or if you know, it wants to have a dramatic angle. It's all forced on you. You can't change it at all. 
As you expect, this has like a huge effect on jumping simply because you can't really tell where Rygar is in relation to other objects in the environment. So when you're doing some of the heavy duty platforming action in later parts of the game, you'll find yourself, you know, falling off and having to start that section over. But it's funny because it almost seems like the game knows which parts uh, are really susceptible to camera problems or camera related accidents because instead of starting you back at the save point, which other parts of the game do, uh, you'll basically just start off right basically where you jumped off and fell at. So it's really sort of forgive, forgiving in that sense. It's also unfortunate that you can't manipulate the camera simply just to get a look at all the really awesome environments in the game. Um, Rygar is simply uh, an incredible looking game. Uh, the, architect the attention to detail and the architecture in the Colosseum level or in the levels that have a lot of temples, it's just amazing to see them and there's a lot of special effects going on. Uh, in one of the levels you'll see you know, waters cascading down the steps, uh, you'll see a faint rainbow, all kinds of different lighting effects. It's really just amazing to see what Tecmo has done with the PlayStation 2 hardware for this game. The character models, the bosses, uh, even some of the lesser enemies are all pretty detailed as well, so there really isn't any shortage of graphical splendor in this game. Uh, and Best of all, it maintains a high you know, 60 frame per second frame rate and never ever slows down. As previously mentioned, the voice acting in the game is pretty laughable, but uh, the soundtrack is actually quite excellent. Um, thanks to the help of the Moscow Symphony, Tecmo has recorded a series of orchestral tracks for the game, all of which fit the environments incredibly well. And you'll get a kind of nice mixture of different sounding tracks, uh, some of which sound like, as though, sound like they were ripped from the movie Gladiator, Rygar can be a fun game to play simply because the battle system has been executed so well and because there's a slight exploration element in the game where you can kind of go uh, into hidden areas and search for items that you can use to power up the disc armor or whatever. Uh, but the game is also incredibly short. It's only about four and a half to five hours uh, on your first run through. And the only extras in the game are theater where you can view different cutscenes from the game as well as the 2002 E3 Rygar movie. Um, there's also a gallery where you can view conceptual sketches of Rygar as well as environments and different characters in the game. Uh, you can also unlock a hard mode and another mode called Pizza Armor by defeating the game. But none of these things are really uh, big enough to kind of make you play through the entire game over again. So it basically comes down to this. If you, so if you want a quick action platforming fix that has really high production values, then Rygar is the way to go. But if you're looking for something that'll hold your attention for a little bit longer, then you'll definitely want to just rent this one.